welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Before we start this show, I want to remind everyone who's attending, next month, September 15th through 17th, 2017, will be a huge huge conference all about the afterlife. Now, many of the listeners here have written me that they will be attending, and so I'm grateful. And just a reminder, we will be meeting on the Thursday night before it starts in the lobby. I'll have a sign there. And as a gift from me to you, I have a We Don't Die blue bracelet that you can have. And it'd be easy to spot other listeners of the show in the uh, symposium that weekend. So for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, it's called the Afterlife Research and Education Symposium, which is being held September 15th through 17th at the Embassy Suites in Scottsdale, Arizona. There are going to be between 500 and 600 attendees there, plus 33 speakers from around the world, including myself, that are all interested in this topic of the afterlife, not just proof that the afterlife exists, but how to get in touch with our loved ones in the afterlife, some really cool things that are happening with technology, and how to have a powerful life while we're here. Now, it's quite possible that you're listening to this episode oh, years in the future, so I want to encourage you or anyone interested to go to afterlifestudies.org to find out more about it. There is a yearly symposium being held, and there's some pretty great, pretty great people in the world of um the afterlife study. So I think you'd really like it. So on to the show. I'm delighted to introduce you to a new friend. His name is Mark Lanehart, who calls himself the intuitive prospector. After his own near-death experience and several personal tragedies, Mark has spent several years deciphering and demystifying the subjects of death and dying, and he strives to help others tap into their intuition and abilities. Mark is an internationally distinguished and tested psychologist medium. He's a holistic healer, an inspirational thought leader, and a teacher. He is a writer for Ohm Times Magazine, and he hosts his own radio show, which is called Inspired Living Radio. Also, he's a hiking guide and a certified scuba diver. You can find out more on his website, marklanehart.com. So I'm really excited to say Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector. Welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Hi, Sandra. How are you? Hi, Mark. How are you? (laughs) I'm fantastic. I'm ready to do a little prospecting today. I love that. I just took a cruise not too, too long ago with my mom in Alaska, and we were hearing all these stories of people prospecting for gold. Oh, yeah. And so I have a sneaky suspicion that you're going to be talking about prospecting for the gold within our own lives. Am I correct? That's correct. I like to say spiritual prospecting for your own spiritual gold, because it really is about finding what is important to you and it's different for everybody everybody's looking for something different and a lot of my practice focuses in on you know um, helping people find whether it's you know happiness peace joy through the power of meditation metaphysics mindfulness consciousness mediumship Uh, that's you know really the the work i'm doing here in seattle so when you went to alaska did you stop off in seattle uh we left out of seattle that's where the the cruise originated and and okay yeah yeah, I'm just over in West Seattle, so oh, next time cool. you'll have next to let time? Me I'd love yeah. to do that cruise again. It was just so fantastic. And it did, it feel, felt like an expedition, you know, and a discovery. <laughs> and my personal belief is once we have a good sense that the afterlife is real, it, then it kind of leaves us with, well, who are we and what is our life for? So it's going to be fun to talk to and and learn a little bit about prospecting for our own spiritual gold. But Mark, okay, you've already admitted that you live in Seattle. That's a great place to be. But could you tell us a little bit about your story? Uh, You know, is this something you've always believed in? Or how did you end up getting in touch with the spiritual world? And especially, you know, finding out that we don't die. Yeah, you bet. Um, So my journey actually started years ago with uh, great personal trauma and tragedy. I had a uh, brother, little brother, that was murdered. Uh, and then three days later, my older brother was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. So wow. within that span of, a, you know, the, the four days, you know, I literally went to, you know, burying one brother to go into the hospital to find out that another brother was going to pass into the spirit world. 
And that's, that's been several years ago, but that was the start of my transformation. I like to say that a shakening causes an awakening, if you will. And I've always believed in, you know, I, I was raised Catholic. Um, I like to say that I'm a recovering Catholic now and, and more of a spiritualist in the fact that I'd been raised with the belief system of, you know, heaven and hell and purgatory, mm-hmm. uh, but it had really never had a personal experience in my family that really changed me and start to put me on this path of understanding the spiritual world and connecting with those in the spiritual world and, and understanding that love doesn't ever die. It just transcends and, and changes into a different energy and frequency, but is always um, you know, being able to connect and be able to tap to as just a thought away. And so with those great you know, tragedies and traumas that I went through, the transformation to be um, a spiritual teacher is where that all began. But what really unlocked the door for me, uh, you know, I know some folks say that they were born with this gift. I, I believe that we all have these gifts. Mm-hmm. It's just how do you want to develop them and where do you want to go? With, what is your intent to do this work? And for me, it wasn't about being a psychic medium. It wasn't about, you know, um, connecting with loved ones on the other side. I was actually, um, in the U.S. Coast Guard at, at the time of the tragedy. So I've, I've always been around death and dying professionally from the U.S. Coast Guard to um, being a professional firefighter EMT. Wow. And uh, so, you know, I'd always seen death that, you know, it, it didn't surprise me, but I'd never had a personal experience with that. So after the transformation began, uh, I retired from the fire service. Uh, well, I moved out of the Coast Guard into the fire service and retired due to a medical injury. I had b- broke my back. And so that put me on a new path. Uh, what I like to say, soul adventures. We all have these soul adventures that we're, uh, you know, gaining experiences because that's what life is about, right? Learn it from experience. That's why we're here. And so I ended up going to the University of Washington here in Seattle, taking my graduate studies in sports medicine and human performance. And it was through that course that uh, we had a course dedicated to the professional athlete on visualization, manifestation, and meditation. Nothing to do with spirituality whatsoever. Uh, Unbeknownst to me, though, the instructor who was on loan from Stanford uh, actually had a background in spirituality. So I spent a whole semester meditating, and that is really what unlocked the door to really go down this path. Uh, this would have been back in 2008, so I guess we've been uh, you know, uh, some years in the making here on opening this spiritual path for me to where I started working in the psychic sciences, the, the metaphysical energy, the mediumship energy, and really trying to get a, a basic understanding, because I was so new to it, what is this really all about? And not necessarily wanting to move in as a as a light worker to do this full time and professionally, but just getting a better understanding that I wanted to connect with my brothers on the other side and uh, stay in contact with them. And so that led me to, you know, start studying and mentoring and developing spiritual development. Led me to England to become a British trained uh, medium and how to do this, you know, uh, the right way, and also to just have a basic understanding of the spiritual world and and how things work in the terms of love, energy, frequency, and vibration, and uh, that's where I'm at today. Wow. What happened, Mark, in with this meditation that you were able to, I mean, was there any aha moments that like, oh my gosh, this stuff is real, um, that actually led you into the uh, medium? Part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when the, the the power of meditation and mindfulness and just surrendering to silence and listening, uh, we're we're so busy as as a species today. We're so distracted that we don't take. I like to say we don't take the time to disconnect, so that we may have the time to reconnect. And when I started to sit in silence and listen through different modalities of meditation, even just where my thoughts were, quietness, um, walking meditation, uh, muscle tension release meditations, all sorts of different meditations, it really opened me up to where I could actually hear and see my brothers in the spirit world. And that and that was just on my side of the family. On my other side, on my wife's side of the family, she had just lost her dad at the age of 47 to multiple sclerosis. So, you know, you take all of those tragedies, young lives of 21, 35, 47, they didn't get to live their life fully. And so I wanted to connect with them. And I did. I started to connect with them uh, in several ways through the power of uh, clairvoyance, which is the ability to see them in my mind, clairaudience to actually hear their voice, clairsentience to actually feel them when they're close to me and their energy where my hair would stand up. And I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I said, you know what? I want to explore this. 
uh, more. I want to see where this takes me um, because it was a spiritual paradigm shift and that 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 awakening, that spiritual shaking that caused the awakening um, was, I think, the spirit world actually choosing me uh, to be a spiritual ambassador and really be a spokesperson for the spirit world, which I did not want to do. I came, I'll be honest with you, Sandra, I came kicking and screaming and there was probably about two years of self-analyzing, uh, not wanting to do this, worrying about what society would think, what, you know, the judgments. I know that, that conversation. <laughs> and, you know, it was about two years I'm of that. I'm not the and, one. Yeah. I'm not the one. Do not pick me. Now, I know some folks raise their hand and, and, and love jumping out there and being on TV and, and you know, in, in having all of the, the accolades of the book and everything. That's not what I wanted. I didn't set out to do it this way. And Spirit World said, uh, no, we need you to do this. And now you jump to today, you know, with the radio show and Facebook Live and Home Times Magazine writing for them and working on my first book. Um, I, I just love it. And I love inspiring others. I like to say, be inspired, inspire others, because that's what life is all about. And it's, again, it was through those tragedies that began the transformation for me to really, truly start living. With the death of my brothers, it actually helped me to start living my life and help others that are also going through their own personal loss of whether it's a family member, a friend, a colleague, or animals. You know, I've got a lot of, uh, you know, animals in my part of my spiritual entourage, as I like to say over on the other side. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 literally helping people, being in service to others, being in service to our planet, but also doing this in a way that, you know, um, where people I think it's healthy to be a skeptic in this in this line of, of work. And I tell my clients that all the time, but when you feel something, when you see something, when you hear something, or that synchronistic event takes place, or that coincidence as society likes to call it. It's your own journey, and that's that spiritual gold that we talked about at the very you know top of the show is spiritual prospecting for your own spiritual gold. Because when you feel it, see it, hear it, taste it, touch it, smell it, it changes you forever. Mm. Well, you experience through meditation something that so many people want. It's like we want to know that our loved ones are around. What Can you describe what happened? Because um, there's a difference between thinking – or it could be just a memory of your brothers, but how did you know it was really them? You know, you know what I'm asking? Because people want this. And, you know, I, I talk, we talk a lot about on the show meditation and quieting our mind and intent and all that. But so many people are like, well, how do I know it's really them? It's just not my imagination. Like what convinced you that you were really con- with your brothers? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. Fair question. It, it's kind of like the same. How do you tell someone that you love them? How do you show how do you prove that you love somebody? Mm-hmm. And it's not it's not done in word. It can be done in words. It can be done in thoughts. But it's that knowing. It's right. that clear cognizance of knowing something bigger than yourself. So when I actually connected to my brothers, I could see them come close to me. I could feel the energy of the love that we shared. Um, and so it's through the power of love. And there's a surrendering aspect to this as well. It, it's getting um, becoming more what I like to say the observer of things versus being in the ego mind that, you know, having conversations with your thoughts or, um, you know, what you might have picked up and might be thinking, you know, is this really the spirit world? You know, because people say, how do you know it's a difference between your thought and the spirit world? And a lot of times I get the answers before I even ask the question That's from the wild. spirit world. And, you know, I get a lot of sign symbols and synchronistic events as well that I tell people to pay attention to. Um, I always say, don't take my word for it. You'll you'll have this experience, the spirit world, the universe, whatever your belief system is, it will show you if you're open to it. You set the intent because energy follows your intent and you surrender to the messages and, and be that observer. Whether, you know, for example, uh, when my father-in-law passed from his MS, we always would see a red-tipped hawk. And so we have the red tipped hawk as, as a spirit animal that will show up at the right times. We have the song Green Day, I Hope You Had the Time of Your Life, that, would, uh, that was at his funeral. And when that song plays, that's a reminder that they're just a thought away. And the, the best way to you know, go within to feel the spiritual world is to feel it through your heart. Put your hand over your heart, take a deep breath. And ask ask the spirit world a question, whether it's your loved one on the other side or a question that you have from a family or even your animals, and you'll get a response in the physical world, either through the the vibration of your heart, through the thoughts of your mind, through the external signs, symbols, and synchronistic events that take place on a daily basis, because 
the power is really, I just talked about this this morning, the magic is in the present moment. And most people miss it because they're not in living in the present moment. The spiritual world is very subtle, and it takes place in the present moment, not in the past, not in the future. And that's why a lot of folks miss that opportunity. Mm, when we're quiet is when mm-hmm. we can speak and the opposite's true. They're quiet when our mind is so busy. You know, it's interesting you're talking about your brothers. I remember at some point in my journey, I really learned the value of being in the present moment and quieting my mind. And it was just before I went to bed and I said, you know, Dad, if you're really here, you know, give me a sign that I wouldn't normally think about. Mm-hmm. And so then what I did is I, you know, I, I think I'm talking to myself nine times out of ten, but I sure. just let the thought go. And then I just quieted my mind and just, you know, really tried not to pay attention to anything. And Mark, what happened was I started seeing what I can only describe as like a slideshow of past shared experiences I had with my dad. But Mm -hmm. things I haven't thought of or angles that I wasn't like looking at something. And it was just like, it just a really quick slideshow fill. And then also I got this feeling of goosebumps and then Mm. I was just overwhelmed with a feeling of love. You know, and some people could argue, oh, that was my imagination, well, whatever. But it's like one of those things where we have to know for ourselves and trust for ourselves that that's the real deal. And that was just one little thing for me that I'm like, hey, Pop, <laughs> you're here. Yeah, and it's it's the same thing. As, like, how do you prove the power of love to somebody? How do you prove that you love somebody? It's yeah. A lot of what we do is pseudoscience. You can't prove it, but you can't disprove it because it's based on the person's experience and what they either see or what they feel. And their belief system also plays a, a, a role, I believe. Yeah. Um, so sometimes you have to unlearn in order to learn a new process. And, you know, a lot of times I make reference to the wind. You know, we see the effects of the wind all the time, yes. but we don't actually see the wind with our actual physical eye. So a lot of what it takes place is done in the unseen world, and it's only felt or, you know, um, seen in the mind's eye, and you have that conversation just like you did. The analytical mind is, okay, is this my imagination, or is this really dad coming through? You know, and usually what I what I tell folks, if it's the imagination, you usually have about a three-second pause or a window, and then the thoughts start. Well, you start having a conversation, but if it's a spirit world, it instantly clicks right into your mind. So that slideshow that started when you asked the question of your dad, you set that intent, energy follows it. And within, you know, seconds, that slideshow started up and it was like your dad having a, a slideshow with you. Yeah. Remember race. when we flew this airplane? Remember when yeah. we were on this motorcycle and we went up Mount Washington? Remember this? Remember that? You know, it's like, I actually didn't remember that, you know? <laughs> and there it was in the slideshow. Yeah. Well, and what I love, too, in, in proving that the spirit world, it, it's not about me proving the spirit world. I let the messages, when I'm doing a public gallery mm-hmm. um, or I'm doing a demonstration in mediumship, and again, this is something that I go to England every year to work on to get better and to be the best, um, accurate, most evidential spiritual medium that I can in modern times. That's actually my affirmation is because I want people to feel and to know when those messages come through through evidence, through accuracy, that they know without a shadow of a doubt that it's their loved ones coming through. And I tell people all the time, I'm either one hell of a good guesser or there is something to this work uh, when you get that message and you just feel it, you know it, you can feel the energy around, you make that connection. Um, I just had, uh, just this morning, I gave somebody um, a, a reading on my Facebook Live and I was talking about peaches and sure enough, she had uh, her cousin who was in the spirit world uh, went by the nickname of Peaches, and she just posted about this. So we could talk about synchronistic. We could talk about coincidental. For me, it's the spirit world coming through saying Peaches was coming through just to say hi. And sometimes that's all they need to do is come through and say, I'm not gone. I may be gone in body, but I'm forever present in memories, thoughts, love, and energy. Mm, so great. Do you remember when you first started studying mediumship? Did you go t- take a course somewhere? Was this going to Arthur Finley? How did you first no. <laughs> take your first uh, mediumship 101? Yeah, you know, it, it was so funny. Um, and it was one of my greatest experiences of actually seeing the actual spirit world because a lot of a lot of times people ask, well, do you see the, the spirit world with your eyes? And I say, no, I don't personally. Now, some do. Um, but it's not like the movie The Sixth Sense where the little boy would actually see um, – I don't right. see them, sense them, and I see them in my mind's eye. But there have been on an occasion, I'd say about five times 
since doing this work where I've actually seen the physical um, spiritual being in the physical world with my eyes where I, I'm actually blinking my eyes going, are they really standing there? Um, so to wow. answer your question, I started off, I started looking um, to explore and discover what this was all about. And Lisa Williams uh, out of England kept coming up. And I thought, well, you know, she's 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 been on TV. She's a well-known psychic medium out of England. And I don't really know much about the world. And she was offering a... Um, advanced mediumship class down in Dallas, Texas, her first. So so this would have been back in 2010 after my two years of self-analyzing of what the heck is going on here. And so you had to submit an application uh, to be accepted. And I had no business. I had no business card. I had no, you know, I wasn't the intuitive prospector at the time. And I just wrote from the heart of why I'm searching to understand the world of mediumship. And I actually talked about Star Wars. I'm a big Star Wars fan. Most people that know me or my work know that I always make reference to the actual true force that really does, um, connect us all, you know, not something that was done in a movie, that concept was actually taken from thousands of years of philosophy and put into a movie. So I talked about Star Wars and my love of of Star Wars as a little kid growing up. And Lisa was also a huge Star Wars fan. So there was about, um, there was about 2000 people that applied for this advanced one-on-one mediumship course with her. And she took 75 people and I was one of the 75. So I felt very, you know, humbled and honored to be invited down. So I jumped on a plane and went down to Dallas, Texas to get a better understanding of how this all works. And it was, an, it was a, for me, it was a very um, interesting learning environment because out of the 75, there was only six guys. <laughs> so it was, you know, women, women, women and men ratio was very, um, very low for the men and very yeah. high for the women. And which was fine. It was just, yeah, but I've come to learn too that a lot of men don't tune in. They're not in, you know, uh, in touch with the, the spiritual world um, compared to women, where women are very intuitive, very in tune, you know, bring forth life and very connected. And so that was part of my transformation too, was to help, you know, guys become more in tune and use their intuitiveness and their awareness uh, abilities um, and, and still be, you know, a strong male energy. <laughs> so, um, so I spent the weekend learning, and um, unfortunately, before I left, my cousin had disappeared, um, and we weren't sure what had happened. And he had been dealing with some, you know, very personal transgender type of issues, and and really having a struggle. And I was I was sitting there in class at the back of the class, taking it all in. You know, everybody's like, "Oh, it's Lisa Williams. I'm going to go sit up in the front." For me, I just wanted to take the environment in and just learn. And I'm sitting there in the back, and it's just me in the back row. And we we start a meditation and somebody touches me on the shoulder. And I actually thought it was physically somebody touching me on the shoulder. I'm Mm -hmm. thinking, well, meditating, it's kind of rude. We're meditating. Why are you touching me on the shoulder? So I opened my eyes and I looked around and there was nobody. And I was on the very end of the aisle. So I went back into my meditation. It was a guided meditation that Lisa was doing. And somebody touches me on the shoulder again. And I'm thinking, okay, this is just ridiculous now. Why are you – I'm trying to meditate here. And I, I turn around and i physically see with my eyes see my cousin kevin uh and my uh uncle gary standing in jedi robes with you know at the end of return of the jedi where they're standing in the jedi robes and luke sees yoda mm-hmm. and, and um anakin and obi-wan and they have this white light around them the energy of of being in the spirit world when i turned around that's what i saw with my physical eye i saw kevin and my uncle gary standing there in jedi robes with a full white light around them smiling at me And I probably saw them probably 10 seconds, Mm -hmm. 15 seconds, where I literally closed my eyes, opened my eyes, and they were still there. Still there, okay. And I was like, okay, what just happened? (laughs) So I went back into my meditation. We broke for lunch. I told my wife who had flown down with me, and I said, you're not going to believe this, but I just saw Kevin. He is in the spirit world. And she's like, no, no, we got to make – you don't want to think that. He's okay. Go back into session. Long story short. We get a call about two hours later that they had found him and he had actually committed suicide and they had found him in a river. And I, you know, I, at first I was sad, but at the same time I was like, he's, but he's not dead. He's living in the spirit world because I just saw him Mm -hmm. two hours ago in a full, you know, and that's how he presented to me. And that's what I've also found that the spirit world will present themselves to our database of understanding things that we perceive and receive information that we understand so i would understand seeing him in a jedi robe because of my love for star wars and i had seen him with my own eyes and and that was kind of the the 
the tipping point, I guess, that because I'd seen him with my own physical eyes, knowing that he was in the spirit world, um, that was probably one of my most powerful um, events when I first started doing this yeah. work. And your uncle and, was standing with him? Is that who you said? Yeah, my uncle had passed a few years before, and he was standing right next to him uh, as a way to say, I've got He's him. With He's, the spirit. He's with me. He's in the spirit world. Everything is fine. And I even, when I started to come out of the spiritual closet, if you will, I actually told that story at Kevin's funeral, and, and people looked at me like, what? Mm. <laughs> so that was kind of the, the, the coming out of my spiritual journey that is like, no, Kevin's Kevin's not dead. And I don't even like to use the word uh, dead and dying because that implies an end. I like to say transitioning or passing over because it, it really is a transitioning or a change of energy to something different than what we understand in the physical world. Yeah, I think there needs to be a new word because – or, you know, like selfie caught on, right? There's a word for we're not dead, you know, that we're invisible, yeah. that we still exist. You yeah. Know, that, uh, yeah. Yeah. And we don't have to see something to know it's real. We can't. You and I are now connected through Skype and wireless internet. Exactly. That's pretty magical, right? That we're having this level conversation all being recorded forevermore. And, yep. uh, and we can't see the, the technology that's doing it. So I say our loved ones are right there. And I absolutely love how you saw your cousin and your uncle. Yeah. It was powerful. And I, I like to say, you know, Nikola Tessa talked about this in the late 1800s when he was talking about frequency, and he is the father of frequency. And the whole reason that we have this ability to connect through Skype and through vibration and energy. And, you know, Nikola Tessa was, was very big on if you want to unlock the secrets of the universe, you think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And a lot of work that I do is based on that philosophy, you know, in, in spiritualism is based on, you know, the vibration of the spirit world, energy, your energy, the earth's energy, the energy of the spirit world connecting and blending with you. And it's really that simple. And the spirit world is literally just a thought away. That's great. When you were with that Lisa Williams for that um, uh, course, did you start practicing mediumship on other people? Uh, well, through the course I did, but it, it would have been it would be years later that I actually started to, um, you know, when people say the term professional, I don't like the word professional because it makes me feel like I'm at the top of the my game and I feel like I have so much more. I'm just just touching the surface of this and have so much to learn. But it's mostly professional because people are paying you for your time. It's not about the money. It's about the commodity of your time because that's our greatest gift. Why we're here is our time. And so. For me, after Lisa Williams, it just it, it it just opened me up to even more of wanting to explore and discover through body, mind, and spirit, and that led me to other workshops. Um, still didn't head to England. I actually went to the Omega Institute. Love it. And, Love the Omega uh, Institute. You know, had my first experience at <laughs> the York, Omega. Right back, New York, folks. The best. Upstate, yeah, upstate New York. Uh, great place. A little expensive, um, but I an ended up mentoring with John Holland and Janet No Havoc, who is a, a sister, um, and actually left uh, to become a spiritual medium. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so that was kind of my next journey. And then after that, that's when I was introduced to Arthur Finley College in England, and that's and I've been going there ever since. Every year I go over for um, a week to learn and to mentor and to develop. And then next in 2018, I'll actually be going for two weeks. That'll be my longest period of uh, building up to that. Because usually after a week, I'm exhausted. So two weeks will be very interesting to be over there for two weeks at a time. Yeah, I think you and I, I've known about you for a couple of years because our mutual friend Darla and I have been twice over the past couple of years. And I remember <laughs> the first time she's like, well, Mark would do this. This is how Mark would get there. <laughs> <laughs> like, who's this Mark? Anyways, she just said wonderful guy. things. So no, I'm I'm so grateful because it is, you know, in, in my mind, it's one thing. And I encourage anybody who, you know, so many people, Mark, they want to go to a medium and that's all great. Mm -hmm. Do it. But there's this whole nother level when you take a course on mediumship and you're starting to accurately see pictures and hear words and names and stuff in your own head that really takes you from kind of a faith in the afterlife really to a knowing that there's there's no other way that I could be coming up with these things you know like I don't know these people I don't know these details and why are they showing up in my head and so the Arthur Finley College is one of those places on planet earth uh, that you can take a course in mediumship of course there's plenty of other people that offer courses but it's mm. fantastic 
Yeah, and the reason that so when I really started to get into this work professionally, I wanted to be um, aligned with the best. And mm -hmm. the reason that I like AFC is because the the Spiritual National Union SNU. Mm -hmm. Um, they have consumer laws over in England that actually protect people from, you know, fraudulent, you know, unfortunately there are, you know, uh, yeah. people out there that do this work that are fraudulent, that are doing it just for the money or doing it for the fame. And in England, they have consumer laws that actually protect people. Uh, they used, they actually used to be called the witchcraft laws and they changed that to be a little bit more reflective of modern time. <laughs> um, Thankfully. But, I, I, I like that, and I saw that we didn't have this in America. And so I'm actually a full member of the SNU. I'm actually taking certification classes through the SNUI, which is uh, – we call it SNUI, which is um, uh, Spiritual National Union International. And so I'm actually taking a, a, a course based on public demonstrations uh, for platform demonstrations, so actually being up in, in front of people doing this work. And that's the reason that I actually became a member because I liked that it actually was very professional. You know, it is an organization, of course, um, but it, it, it has uh, accountability and it has, you know, guidelines for doing the work the right way. Because in America, I saw a lot of different ways of doing this work. And each medium is, is definitely unique and different. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you go to a workshop, I could say, well, Lisa Williams said this, so this is now law of how to do this. And I didn't agree with a lot of what people were saying. Just because somebody says it, just because Mark says it doesn't make it so. It's about going and finding your own journey and, and doing it the right way on how you present the messages to people in a uh, caring, professional, healing, right way Um because there's a lot of expectations that come with mediumship and doing psychic work. If if people want to work with me and they want to know their future, I'm not the psychic for you. I don't do predictions uh, based on you know your um, future comes one day at a time. Again, coming back to that present moment, mm -hmm. being in the present moment, you can plant seeds for your future, you know, no doubt about it. But I'm not going to give you the winning lottery, lottery numbers. I'm not going to predict your death. That's not what this work is about. Um, and so. When you get, you know, the messages from the spirit world, you can get guidance for sure and instruction. Um, but I wanted to be the best, and that's why I'm part of Best American Psychics, part of the tested and validated. Congratulations so Congratulations on that, by the way. Thank, Put thank you. Through that, it, it means a lot. It really does. So yeah, many people ask, look for a good, you know, who can I trust? And uh, some people that are tested and by really good people. It's like, well, I take a look at this website, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I tell people, I tell people, go to my website, marklanehart.com, research me, check out my education, check out my my testimonials from people that I've worked with all around the world. It's not about me, it's about other people's experiences with me, and people read that, and that's what you know allows me to work with people all around the world, or like I like to call them spiritual prospectors. And um, you know, see the, the, the sites that I'm affiliated with, Best American Psychics and Best Psychic Directory, both vetted, validated, tested, and also, you know, my studies at Arthur Finley College and, and just learning and how to do this the right way. Yeah. Yeah. And just a little plug for SNUI. I, we've talked about it on the show a lot. SNUI.org is a great, inexpensive, like less than, uh -huh. what, $30, $35 a year in U.S. money uh, to be part of it. And there's so many. I don't know if you've taken advantage of any of the uh, online services. I have, and I have yeah. That, that there's medium readings at the end that are included. They're just so moving. And to just listen to one of their um, services, it just helps me get my day on track, my week on track, whatever it is, really paying attention, yeah. attention to a bigger it picture. And I think, you know, a lot of doing this, too, is, is spiritual development. It's it's a daily activity, just like the power of meditation. It's something, you know, it's use or lose with anything that we do in life. And, you know, with my online spiritual development group that I have, it's, you know, one of the foundations that we talk about is trust on what you're getting. Because if you can't trust what you're getting, it's going to be hard to move forward uh, with, you know, the, the spirit world because you're going to be doubting yourself um, and not trusting into the, the what the spirit world is trying to tell you or show you or make you feel or those signs, symbols, and synchronistic events that I talk about all the time. But it's also daily discipline, what I call the spiritual workout room. If you want to you know, get close to the spirit world and those in the spirit world, you have to take the time to disconnect so you can reconnect to something larger than yourself. And we're, a lot of people are just so darn busy. They, you know, they get up from the time their feet hit the ground. They're running. The mind is running with them. And you really have to get into that spiritual workout room and really start developing 
uh, on a daily, weekly basis of sitting in silence, sitting in the power, um, you know, practicing different psychic sciences, practicing being wrong uh, and accepting that you, you, you didn't get it right. And it's OK to get a no that, no, I'm not getting this message. That person that you're connecting with doesn't make sense to me. Working through that so you can trust and lean into uh, the spirit world. And, you know, SNUI is great for that. They have all sorts of online classes. And when you're an SNU member, it's even cheaper. So um, I would recommend both of those, SNU and both uh, SNU and SNUI are, are snooey, as we like to call it. Um, but prospect for what's right for you. You know, for your listeners out there, um, if it feels right, I like to say vibe with your tribe. If the vibration feels right, you know, vibe with your tribe and get into a spiritual development group, uh, whether in person or online and start practicing. Um, you know, the example I, I would say is, um, you know, would you go into a workout room and start, you know, grabbing a 45 pound barbell and start curling that? Of course no. you wouldn't. No, you would have to build up to that and condition yourself, your body, your mind, your energy to work up to that 45 pound, you know, barbell. The same thing is with the spiritual world. You need to practice and, and, and develop and work up to a stronger, uh, deeper connection with that of the spirit world. I think it's so important, Mark, that you're talking about this because, yeah, I'm guilty of this too. I'm busy and know I should meditate and whatever, but I want the results. It's like I want them. Uh -huh. yesterday yep. like I should have already had all these great things but I think it's so important and, and you say it so perfectly that you know it takes time like we would to invest like everybody wants messages from their loved ones everybody wants to be able to quiet their mind and all of a sudden somebody shows up but it is kind of ridiculous to think that the first time you go to a gym and take the tour and lift a couple of free weights for a couple of minutes that like you all of a sudden you're going to have this great body filled with muscles you know it really mm -hmm. takes that commitment and the practice and maybe even scheduling time to meditate and it is just as important to do that inner workout so to speak um, mm -hmm. to get the results and it, it just yeah so I, I think a lot of times even from um group my group members we've got we've got the facebook group we don't die listeners yeah, that, yeah. that it's so like i haven't had a sign yet or i haven't had a dream visitation or nothing's happened but then it's like have you spent any time practicing being present meditating mm -hmm. exactly well, no. you know so just to say it's important and if it's, it's a good visual to imagine the the guy in the gym who wants results without doing the work you know it, it is a practice but oh it's so rewarding Really rewarding. Uh, Mark, I want to talk a little bit. You mentioned your online spiritual development. Are you teaching people this kind of stuff like on online courses? And I really would like you to share your passions and what you are up to because I think yeah. you're fascinating, Mr. Prospector. Oh. Well, thank you so much. I think you're fascinating well, for thanks. doing the work that you're doing and bringing attention to you know, the, the spirit world. And again, we're all spiritual ambassadors in our own, our own way and our own right to – uh, bring, you know, I, I say that, you know, through education, it brings us knowledge and through knowledge, we gain wisdom and wisdom hopefully leads us to enlightenment, whatever enlightenment is for for you and mm -hmm. right. for your listeners, whether it's peace, happiness, um, simplicity. Um, I do a lot of teaching uh, through the Ohm Times Institute. I have about oh, 15 or 16 on-demand classes. I don't um, know I what that is, the Ohm Times Institute. So the Own Times Institute is is a is a institute of uh, online learning uh, with a lot of different instructors and tutors and teachers and a lot of different classes from you know spirituality to mediumship to psychic uh, to mindfulness consciousness and so what I teach on is uh, with my uh, I think I'm at 15 classes now. Um, is I teach on a lot of different subjects. For example, this month I have Spiritual ABCs Level 3, uh, where we'll focus in on uh, spiritual um, connection and spiritual consciousness, the C's of the ABCs, where last month it was about breathing and balance, and, and the month before that it was about awareness and awakening. So I teach, um, you register for the class, It's uh, you know each class ranges on price from Five dollars to twenty dollars to sometimes free. Cheap, uh, I've got a cheap, 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 cheap classes. Um, in fact, uh, Monday on the Great Solar Eclipse, the Great American Solar Eclipse, I have a free meditation class that you can join in uh, for free and, and meditate with me. Uh, but it's a it's an institute with a, a library of classes on demand. You can go back and watch them from when I first started. Uh, some are free, some cost. 
And I, I do a lot of teaching and then also through that platform, through Learn It Live, which is the platform that supports um, all these classes. I have an online spiritual development group where we meet every Wednesday. Uh, it's a dedicated group and we meet and set the intent uh, to develop, whether it's through mediumship, whether it's through spiritual philosophy, whether it's through working on your psychic sciences, metaphysics, consciousness. Sometimes it's just sitting in a, a, a powerful meditation and just feeling that energy. And it's a dedicated time to where we do this every week. And I've got a great group of people. It's a closed group. It's a private group. So if you want to, you know, participate i always say come be a visitor first mm -hmm. see if you vibe with your tribe that's always important yeah, that's cute. um and you know see if it's a fit and then you start working from that and practicing because again it's through development that you'll really increase sitting in an actual development group for me i sat with a dedicated group of four individuals uh for two years in person every wednesday and that's what really helped me go deeper with the, my spiritual journey and my spiritual work so I would recommend that um, for anybody that wants to go deeper with this work and, you know, be consistent with what you're doing. Get, you know, just like that spiritual workout room, be consistent, trust, build your foundations and you'll start to see amazing things, you know, um, uh, unfold for you. Um, whether it's working as a spiritual light worker, as a medium, as a psychic, you may not even want to do this work. It might just be for your own benefit of your own path and where you're going on your own soul adventure. Oh yeah, definitely. This this only enhances everything else you do. Yeah. No question. But and, now being part of a tribe, you can be part of an online tribe. I mean, we don't. Yeah. I, you know, I hate to say this, but in my own life, there's very few people that even know. I mean, they know I have a book, and they know I make these phone calls <laughs> and talk to people, <laughs> but they don't really know my listeners. Now I'm close to 200 episodes. Know me better than people in my life. Thanks in your going to episode 100 yourself but yeah. it's it's something where that we are meeting people online we're meeting these they're very real people but they might happen to be in another part of the world so that we can yeah. we can connect and have our you know and, yeah and, and that's and practices right yeah and that's where you know the snui is great you yeah. can actually connect with people. Um, a lot of people in the spiritual development group, which I call SDG for short, I have people in Chicago, people here in Seattle, people up in Canada. I've had a few people from the East Coast. Um, so it's really, you know, more local because uh, I've had a few people want to join from New Zealand and England, but the time difference is always so hard, you know, because we're oh, doing yeah. a five. You know, so the time difference, you're technically in the future on the East Coast. I'm in the past here on the West Coast because you're three hours ahead. So when you start getting into other time zones from England, they're eight hours ahead. New Zealand is like 13 hours ahead. You know, so it makes it very difficult. But the um, online platform, because we're video, we're audio, I can put people out in, in breakout rooms where they can work, you know, privately and practice doing readings in a, in a private, you know, uh, breakout room. Um, and we record everything so people can go back and, and, and if they miss something, they can watch the recording and still practice that way. So I think just the online format is, for me, it works. It works for a lot of other people because we're, we are so busy and the traffic here in Seattle is just horrible anyway. So trying to get around can be a chore in itself. Uh, but I just found the online really my calling of really connecting with a lot of people. But I think the in-person is, is important too, to take those workshops, to have a mentor that sure. you can – uh, work with, you know, go to a, the, the Arthur Finley College or a workshop Omega and, and be have that in-person experience as well because uh, that's important as part of your, your spiritual development as well. Mm, how do we find out about your spiritual development group, your the Ohm Times Institute, that, all that stuff? Because this is all news to me, which I'm grateful because to have <laughs> some reasonably priced things for people that do want to learn. Yeah, and the, the one-stop shop is marklanehart.com, or you can just internet search the Intuitive Prospector. If you if you plug that in on the on the World Wide Web of the internet, I'll pop up. And through my website, which is, uh, like I said, the one-stop shop for everything that you need, you can get to the links uh, th to the Institute. You can get to the links of my uh, radio show called Inspired Living Radio. You can get to the links of upcoming events. I've got a bunch of upcoming events uh, coming up. Uh, in October. In fact, I'll be in your neighborhood uh, in Boston in the second week of October, and then I'll be up in Canada. So I'm starting to travel a lot more, which is just fascinating Fantastic. Uh, to me. It's just, it's it's very eye-opening because I didn't, one, I didn't want to do this work. Two, I never wanted to do public demonstrations. And three, oh. I'd, I'd be traveling, and yet here I'm doing all three. Isn't that great? So, <laughs> How do you spell uh, your name for your website? Just because you some bet. people it's, are listening and not seeing your name. 
Yep, it's Mark, M-A-R-C. My last name is Lane Hart, L-A-I-N-H-A-R-T, marklanehart.com, or just internet search The Intuitive Prospector, and you'll get to uh, where you're going, and we'll go prospecting. Love it. What do you like teaching the most? Oh, boy. What do I like teach the most? Well, I just love teaching in general. I love to help people uh, discover their gifts, see that light bulb moment go off. Um, I, I love the world of metaphysics. I love teaching metaphysics because it, it talks, you know, from consciousness to mindfulness to meditation to mediumship, energy, frequency, vibration. It's such a fascinating topic. You know, we like to say that spirituality is is pretty much what physics hasn't come to learn yet. And for me, metaphysics is just uh, just so from science to to astrology to space and the things that we're uncovering on a daily basis through the power of technology and seeing farther into the universe and um you know just einstein's theories and and eckhart uh, tolle's theories and nikola tesla's theories it's all just fascinating for consciousness and and mindfulness and the power of the brain gosh that's great i don't know if you know of who uh alan hugano is do you know that name i have i've heard the name yes he uh, i i got to interview him many episodes ago and he's fascinating because he's got a mind he was a marine engineer he's got Mm -hmm. his doctorate he is a brilliant person very familiar with uh, talking the quantum conversation physics Mm -hmm. all of that stuff well he is somebody who went to the arthur finley college and became a medium (laughs) <laughs> so he explains sorry it went i hate to say it went over my head but it did um on a quantum level where the afterlife is the whole technology of the vibrations and energy i i will send you that uh, link because it's a really fantastic yeah. conversation but he is such a specific medium with people like so specific so he took everything he knew from his engineering background and he's mm-hmm. applied it here and i just thought this is where the future is going he's linking now the science and the spirituality and there's several people that are, are doing it and putting a voice to it so um you know a lot of people used to think the world of spirituality was this woo woo stuff you know but yeah, oh yeah. When, when we really start looking at the quantum level of things it's just it's it's all a match you know there's a explanation for it so it's just really a fascinating conversation and and to know that somebody like that went out to become a medium and is a great one you know who's got that science mind yeah, and the science, you know, it, it's it's science and spirituality are really starting to shake hands. Mm-hmm. And again, I say spirituality, not religion in the fact that spirituality is your own journey. Right. I always like to say religion is usually somebody else's experience or a book or a dogma based on somebody's, you know, other's belief system where spirituality is going within and unlocking your own true potential, um, the God spark that's in your heart. I, You know, I, um, we haven't talked about it, but I'm also a certified healthcare provider, so I do a lot of uh, medical intuitiveness as well. Now, I'm not a doctor, so I always have to, you know, put that caveat that you have to, you know, mm-hmm. still talk to the doctor, but I've studied the heart, you know, with my background as a firefighter EMT and a lot of working on people and, and, and doing a lot of cardiac arrests and that God spark, that energy that's in your heart. We know how the heart works, but we don't know where that energy of the heart comes from, what right. makes it go, what makes it tick. And so when you go within and you find that that spark and listen to the whispers of your heart, it can unlock so many um, doors and potentials for your gifts, um, you know, just like the gentleman you were just talking about from the becoming a medium. I'm not sure that when he was getting his doctorate that he foresaw himself becoming a medium, just like when I was getting all my education, I didn't think I would be, you know, working in spirituality at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the consciousness, if you think about it this way, all the information that we ever need is all, all around us at any given time. It's just how do you want to connect? How do you want to upload? If you think in terms of computer from the quantum you know, arena, because it can. It can go over your head. There's times I get lost. I hear Eckhart Tolle talking, and I'm just completely baffled. Like, what did he just <laughs> say? Yes. Yeah, I just completely put it in layman's terms so I can understand it. But if you think about your senses as what you're doing right now, all five of your senses, you're using them all at the same time combined but you don't think about that you don't think about that you're breathing that you're thinking that you're talking that you're hearing but you're using all five of your senses at the same time and the information and knowledge about everything past present and future 
is really all right there. It's just how do you download it like a computer? How do you upload? How do you download? What is your connection piece of, you know, connecting to something bigger than yourself? And that's where consciousness comes in, your mindfulness, um, you know, quantum entanglement, which is if you ever get a chance to look up quantum entanglement, I've always been fascinated with What's quantum. That? So quantum entanglement is something Einstein had talked about several years ago, right? Einstein, I've, I've always wondered if Einstein was actually – actually part of the human race <laughs> so he had so many theories that are coming to you know coming to pass and coming into being proved um being proved right well, another one that you can look up is gravitational waves that einstein predicted back in the early 1900s and they just were able to measure it uh, in 2015 um but quantum entanglement is when you have two cells that are separated and when you put something of a characteristic of like heat or cold or spin the cell in one direction the other cell responds at the exact given time. So quantum entanglement means that there is some sort of force energy that connects all of us. Again, coming back to Star Wars, um, there's a force that binds us. We're all the same. We're all connected. We're all energetic beings here having a physical experience. But when you do one thing to a cell, the other cell uh, reacts at the exact same time. And what Einstein found fascinating, if you were to separate those cells over, let's say, a, a vast distance of, um, you know, 26,000 light years or something just, you know, from here to another galaxy mm -hmm. and do the same concept of quantum entanglement to the one cell, the cell that is thousands of miles away responds at the exact same time. So that actually then gets into the theory of uh, faster than the speed of light, because if you're doing something over a distance – and they're both reacting at the same time. How is that possible? As far as the way we understand physics today, you can you can't go faster than the speed of light that we understand today. So quantum entanglement just is kind of blows your mind. And these are things that we talk about in our spiritual development group: quantum entanglement, string theory, um, gravitational waves, see, things that aren't always seen with the human eye. Um, go back to even the, the debate on if, you know, there was a belief at one point that if you couldn't see it with the physical eye, it didn't exist. Right. Well, the microscope changed that. The telescope changed that. And now we realize that, you know, the microscopic world is a fascinating world alive with very much life, um, you know, and um, the universe is actually much bigger than we once thought. So it, it's fascinating stuff, and, and you know that's what spirituality is, is just exploring and discovering through body, mind, and spirit all in a, in a balance. Yes, and we're living in a very exciting time, and I don't care if we you're are. 30 years old or 70 years old, if this conversation is tickling you right now. <laughs> like, you know, it, we're prospecting, Sam. It, we're prospecting. It's, yeah, it's never – too late you know so one person told me not too long ago is oh they're too old to get into this it's like mm -mm. only if you say so you know so, I, this gives me life and it sounds like it gives you life as well and when i hear that you know i i like to say life is short live it ask questions mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. by asking questions it brings a it brings about awareness and through the power of awareness um you start to look that you know humans we measure our life by time we're the only species that I'm aware of, unless there's another species on Earth that actually wears a watch like humans. <laughs> and we measure our life by time. And we think that being, you know, I've been around the sun for 40. I've been going around the sun for 45 years now. Um, and then even, you know, I just watched the oldest guy uh, complete a triathlon in Hawaii. He was 83 years old and he completed a triathlon. I can't complete an Ironman at 45, let alone 83 in my mind. Um, so age is nothing but a number, and it's what your belief system is and what you put into that that number of, of how you think and how you feel. And if some people are saying, I'm too old to, to you know learn something new, then that's, that's their path. That's their spiritual soul adventure. But again, we're the only species that pays to live here. We're the only species that measures our life by time. Mm -hmm. We're the only species that creates our own fear and drama. So, you know, <laughs> we're a very unique species in, in what we do and how we live in the world. And when you start to get to a place of silence and listen, which is an anagram, same amount of letters, different meaning, um, you start to realize that there's a bigger world, there's a bigger um, consciousness out there that you're just tapping into. And it can be quite, a, can be quite an adventure for you and very eye-opening and uh, 
you know, spiritual gold, as I say. Man, awesome. We only have a few minutes left, Mark. Would you give yeah. us just a couple of tools that we can maybe do today or maybe one that if we want to start our own uh, intuitive prospecting, like something that we can do on the court to get us, uh, you know, just move us forward? Yeah. So the first thing that I, I always like to, to tell people is you are the magic in this moment. And what I mean by that is being in the present moment is a lot of power, a lot of inspiration, a lot of creativity, a lot of healing can take place by being in the present moment. Um, learning to be an observer of your external world, uh, not trying to control the waves of change because you, you trust me, life, you know, here in my studio, I have a plaque that says life happens. Life is going to happen regardless of uh, our expectations or, you know, what we think should happen. And when you uh, become a, a, a big wave surfer, as I like to say, you can't change the waves, but you can learn to surf them. Uh, it's going to open you up to, um, you know, a greater uh, awareness of the world around you. But Coming back to just uh, you're the magic in the moment and, and just be in the moment uh, and not get into the, uh, you know, the, pa- the past energy, the future energy, because yes. your mind, your mindset follows that your thoughts. And, and what I like to tell people is it all starts with your thought mindfulness, your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your behavior, your behavior leads, leads, you, leads you to your, um, you know, your destiny and, and your habits of where you're going. So if you can, you know, be in the present moment and have, you know, somewhat of a control on your thought process, it's going to start changing things in your life. Amazing ways from career to love to in, whatever you're in search of, happiness, peace. And it all really just starts with that that mindset and, you know, that computer in your head the power of that computer in, in what you're doing on a daily basis. So you are the magic in the moment. Mm, I'm thinking of that computer. So often we give ourselves to whatever that computer says is right or wrong, and we believe that's the truth. I think that computer is a tool for us to use. So if we can start by turning on the mindfulness, turning on the present moment, that we can actually use our minds as opposed to them using us. Or our well, there's a there's that connotation, I think, therefore I am. And again, humans yes. from a conscious standpoint are constantly doing this. And even just from a science standpoint, they've been looking at Alzheimer's and dementia, brain triggers, you know, because we're thinking too much. We have so many things that are going on in our lives that we're speeding up that they've shown that we're not resting enough. So I'd also tell your listening audience to find time to disconnect so you can have time to reconnect, to get rest, to rejuvenate, to reflect, to meditate, to find rest, get good sleep, good hydration, what you put into your body. Uh, because if we use our mind up too much, they're showing that you know younger people are getting dementia and Alzheimer's based on not giving the mind enough rest. Wow. And you know, that's through the power of silence and listening and meditation. And meditation is really starting to change in our society, which is very cool to see even from an education standpoint where instead of sending kids to time out or um, detention, they're having to meditate and reflect on you know why it is that you did what you did to get in trouble. And it, it triggers the brain, you know, um, sleep. Your mind is more active asleep than it is awake. So there's something to that. So get enough rest in, in your life uh, so you can have a healthy brain as you get older. Yeah, just one thing. When we talk about meditation and quieting the mind and all of that, is there a simple entryway into it? Because I still think some people think you got to cross your legs and no, say Om. No. <laughs> yeah, so, so Om What's is the, best, the vibrational chant, right? What's the best way to disconnect? I think that the best way to disconnect is to literally get out in nature, um, whether it's to go outside in your front yard, take your shoes off and do what we call earthing, put your feet in the grass, touch a tree, hug a tree. You don't have to get to a quiet place either. You may actually just say, what are my thoughts are in this present moment? But the power of breath, focusing on your breath, because it all starts with breath. Without breath, nothing else goes. Mm -hmm. So through the power of breathing and healing uh, through nature, nature is our greatest teacher. Nature is our greatest uh, healer. So I always say that the power of nature can really – there's more energy in nature than there is in the whole internet. Um, so touch something that's alive. Even put your um, put your hands in the dirt just like you did when you were a little kid. Go out and make mud pies. Put your hand in the dirt, ground, and just see where your thoughts take you. Ask a question. See what the response is. But do it through the power of breath. Do it through the power of nature. And there is no right way or wrong way to meditate. 
Meditate is going within whatever feels right to you. Yeah, there's certain positions that you can get in to enhance that. You can hold certain crystals to enhance that. You can do it in different elements like floating in water um, is a way to enhance your meditative uh, response. But just the simple uh, practice of just being, go out, touch nature, focus on your breath, put your hand on your heart, and just go within and see where it takes you. And that's, you know, and start for just one minute. Time it for a minute. Build up to it, just like that spiritual workout room. And, you know, the the, the, the meditative masters always say, if you don't have 20 minutes to meditate because you're too busy, you should be taking an hour then to meditate. Right, right. I just read that right? yesterday. I thought that was brilliant. That was brilliant. Yeah. And, and for me, I just, whether uh, I can't find time during the day, it's when I wake up in the morning or before I go to bed at night, I just concentrate on the breath. And, you know, then my mind starts thinking about something like back to the you breath, know? in and out. So I always say yeah. I practice Qigong in the morning, uh, which Qigong is the practice of uh, Qi is your energy and Gong is a study of. It's the mother of Tai Chi. Mm. But just awareness to your movement energy um, is a form of meditation. Getting up and walking your dog, uh, watering the garden. Um, I think getting up in the morning, uh, you know, Dr. Wayne Dyer inspired me because he would wake up at 3.30 every morning That's to right. meditate because it's so silent. Everything is still. Your day hasn't really gotten going. And it's the, the mind is fresh. So if you can meditate in the morning, I meditate um, every morning. I don't do 3.30. I do about 4.30, 5 o'clock. Um, I'm not that dedicated yet like Dr. Wayne Dyer is. Um, but um, I would recommend do it in the mornings versus the evenings because you've gone through the whole day and the mind is already tired. Mm -hmm. uh, but use it, you know, you can use it morning, um, middle of the day, end of the day to actually um, you know, help you sleep. Meditation can actually get you into a nice deep sleep. Um, but the best benefits when the rising of the sun uh, is coming up and the day is just starting, that energy is just starting. I found the best uh, for keeping um, the mind from being busy for what's to come because usually you get out of bed. The mind's already racing about your day ahead. What do you got to do? What do you got to complete? And again, you are the magic in the moment. So find that power in the in the present moment and be in that present moment because that's where uh, your peace and happiness really reside. The present really is a gift. <laughs> it really is. It well, really with that, Mark, my friend, I think it's time to draw this episode to a close. Uh, thank you. Really, thank you for being our guest today. Yep, thank you. I, I'm always uh, honored and humbled when people ask me to be on their, their shows. And I uh, look forward to having you uh, on Inspired Living Radio here in a couple months when you get your schedule together. Love it. Love it. I'm a yes, we definitely. We can uh, keep this conversation going. And I would just leave uh, the, the last thing I'd say for your listening audience is, is dare to dream, dare to explore, dare to live. Love it. And also there's a quote that I took off your website. Quote by you. Turn up your ears, turn down your mouth, shut off your mind, open up your heart. Let the loudness of life be replaced with the quietness and peace of the universe and the guidance of knowledge and spirit. That's Love beautiful. It. Yeah, it's you. And to our listener, I want to thank you for spending the last hour with Mark Lanehart and I. A uh, reminder, you can go to his website, marklanehart.com. And I'm excited to go check out the Ohm Times Institute and your spiritual yeah, development group and where you're traveling to. And uh, hopefully, if I'm home in October, I'll meet you live and in person. I think that would be great. And I'd love it. Yeah, I'd love it too. And for our listener, if you're around uh, this September 2017 and can get yourself to Scottsdale, Arizona, we you fly into Phoenix, Check out afterlifestudies.org. And also as a gift, anybody who's listening right now, um, if you'd like a free copy of my book, PDF file, and a very healing audio called How to Survive Grief, go to my website, our website, which is wedontdieradio.com, and click on the Insiders Club. And I don't send you all kinds of crazy emails, I promise, but uh, you will open up a screen that will have some pretty amazing things on it because in an hour we can't give you all the proof of life after death we have it's been a lifelong journey for me and uh, for mark as well but there are so many other tools available so in closing i want to say my name is sandra champlain and i've been delighted to be your host on we don't die radio i do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important so i really want to thank you for listening and we'll see you soon mm -hmm.